In the summer of 1991, Bodolf Hareide, director of the Norwegian Institute of Public Health, presented the results of the vaccine trial. This is not a bad result. Six out of ten have been protected for serious meningococcal disease. This is not a bad result. In reality, the results were a disappointment to the scientists at the Norwegian Institute of Public Health. Normally, a protection rate of 80 to 90 percent is required for approval for production of a vaccine. This vaccine had a rate of 57 percent. This wasn't good enough to include the vaccine as part of the normal vaccine program. And while the meningococcal B epidemic waned naturally, the vaccine was never introduced as planned in Norway. Annelie Sigonsen had to quit school and abandon all her plans for the future. Three independent medical experts believed that it was most probably the vaccine that had triggered the chronic fatigue syndrome, known as ME. In the information brochures the teenagers received before the vaccination, the state committed to giving full financial compensation in the case of lasting injury. But after the injury occurred, the reality was rather different. There were some... It was like banging your head against a wall. At first it was impossible that I had got ill because of the vaccine. Then I had to prove that I did get ill from the vaccine, a direct contradiction to what they had said in the brochure, that they would take responsibility and look after us. And through the years of the case, I have been met with more and more arrogance. They dragged their feet and generally behaved despicably. And their goal, so it seemed to me, was to literally destroy me and to make me shut up and go away. They weren't about to help me. The state wanted to avoid a public court case. And, in this letter, the Attorney General threatens that should Annelise choose to take this to court, the state would consider claiming that the case was statue barred and also claim that there is no connection between her injury and her vaccination. After a 15-year battle, Annelise felt pressured to accept a settlement out of court. The state is entirely responsible. But they haven't done as promised and taken responsibility for the mistakes that appeared. I don't blame the state for my getting ill from the vaccine. That was just unfortunate. No one can predict that someone will react badly to something. But one can take responsibility for making good. And that they haven't done. On the least, that is totally unable to work. She barely got 1.1 million Norwegian kroner in compensation, after tax. Had I known then what I know today, what I had to go through, I would never have claimed compensation from the state. I just would not have tried. It wasn't worth it. The fight against the state, my memories are arrogance, arrogance, arrogance. Jenny Ingebrigtsen also had to fight for compensation. For years she encountered resistance from those who promised to look after her if something went wrong. Five years after her injury was reported, the Department of Health concluded that there was a causal link between the vaccine and the illness. Eight years went by before Jenny was paid a compensation of 1.5 million Norwegian kroner also in an out-of-court settlement. That it takes so many years is not understandable, and in my opinion, a scandal. It would never, ever be accepted by the public that compensation for an injury from a pharmaceutical trial should take so long. But in this case, the state behaves even worse than a pharmaceutical company. You're not seen as an individual in such a trial. Over 200,000 youths, 
you're a tool to help push through a vaccine and to see if it works well or not. On the 12th of November 1993, around 30 experts were called in to a special meeting at the Norwegian Institute of Public Health. Only one issue was on the agenda. Could their own vaccine be the cause of serious neurological illnesses? This report documents several experts' concerns. A ghostly uncertainty shrouded the vaccine after the meeting. Three years later, in this report to the Department of Health, the Norwegian Institute of Public Health admits that the possibility that the vaccine causes illnesses of the nervous system in rare cases is not definitely clarified. In a study that covered all hospitalizations after the vaccine trial, the Norwegian Institute of Public Health concludes that no statistical link has been found between the vaccine and neurological illnesses. But the study has weaknesses. In my opinion, it has quite a lot of weaknesses, and they admit it. And if they build on that study, then they're on thin ice, I would say. This study clearly indicates that the vaccine is not the cause of neurological illness. But what we've said all along, and which we still claim, is that if and when this vaccine is used, it is of course important to monitor this issue especially. But how was it monitored? In 2001, the Norwegian Institute of Public Health started a new trial of the vaccine. And in the information material to four junior schools in Oslo, the Norwegian Institute of Public Health wrote once again that no serious side effects have been proven to have certain connection to the vaccine. When they don't tell about the number of serious cases that occurred, the new group of trial participants also had a right to know this. They should have been informed. I think this is a very sad case. I think for Norway, we are such a small country, this is a big problem. We're not used to dealing with such a big problem.